We're made to believe that we are these weak creatures and that mankind should wake up to its its true potential. And once we wake up to our true potential, the world will be a better place. But we it all starts from within each one of us. Hello, my, my name is Jeff Clackley. Um, I'm here to share my near-death experience. I contract MRSA in February of 2013. MRSA is a, you know, it's a powerful, it's a uh, bacteria that kills a lot of people in the United States, you know, under antibiotic in the month of February of 2013 um, on this, you know, trying to get rid of this MRSA and they couldn't get it all. They had to do surgery on my leg. They went in and got it all. So I get out of the hospital after, you know, seven days in the hospital leading up to April 6th, uh, 2013. I'm recovering from, you know, all of these injuries. My back's doing better. I can walk with the help of painkillers now. Um, and this particular night I was in a lot of pain, but I was going to go out. You know, I had a date. So I decided I was going to get ready and, and you know, make I'm going to live life regardless of what's going on. And that night, I, while I was getting ready, I took two of the painkillers and the pain was still there. And I knew I wanted to go out and I was like, well, you know, I, maybe I'll take two more. And I took two more and I continued to get ready. And, you know, I'm still feeling the pain. And somewhere, you know, I forgot I, either I was high off of the first four and I forgot that I had taken that many and probably about 45 minutes had gone by and I took two more. I start to get nauseated. I get nauseated and, and I start to, I run to the bathroom and I'm vomiting. I'm, I'm vomiting very profusely and I'm, I'm sweating profusely. Sweat's just rolling down my face and, and um, I'm in the house by myself. Nobody's around. So and I continue to throw up until I don't have anything else else in my stomach. I can I throw up until there's nothing left in my stomach. And then I can start I start to feel pain, like intense pain, like stabbing in my stomach. And I'm still dry heaving. And now I'm on the floor and I'm dry heaving still. And the, the intense pain was there. And then I, all of a sudden, no more pain. There's no more pain and I'm not, I'm looking at my body on the ground, you know? So it was like, I'm in the bathroom. I could, while I'm throwing up, I could feel the cold floor and all of that. And then all of a sudden I couldn't feel the, the cold floor. There was no more pain. And then I'm looking at myself and I'm, I'm staring, I'm sitting there and I'm trying to figure it out. And then I realized that's me. And that's when all of a sudden I'm thrust through this, tunnel this tunnel of light and i'm being hurled down this this tunnel and it and uh there's no wind you know i'm thinking i'm flying through this tunnel but i don't feel any wind i don't feel anything in my face and then all of a sudden i appear i appear in this place i call it a realm i don't know i can't call it a place i don't i can't but anyway i'm in this place and the backdrop is like looking into space without the stars, it's it's completely black, you know? And um, let me get these beings. All right, all of a sudden I'm, I'm uh, confronted or in front of these three beings. There's one in front of me and there's two to the side. And the one in front of me seemed to be the one who was in charge or in charge of me or so, um, it was, oh, I should say that this feeling when I got there, it was the best feeling that I've ever felt in all of my life. There was no fear of anything. As I'm hurling down this tunnel too, I should go back and say that all of everything that I had held on to, to earth, like my family, my brothers, my mother, my children, not all of my children, but my older children, the ones who were already off doing their things in life, um, and all of that stuff, my home that I own cars, it all just started to fade away. No, no worries about it. It was as if it was a, a dream that I woke up from, you know, and, and I'm remembering it, but it's like, it's, it doesn't even have any effect on my emotions, but there was one thing that did have an effect 
and that was my four-year-old son. It was He was the only thing that I could hold the memory of very tightly. So as I'm going through here, I'm losing all of my attachments to the earth plane. And I get before these beings and then, you know, it's like everything that you've ever heard about heaven, the love of God, it's there. It's it's there. And it's like the most wonderful feeling that I've ever felt in all my life. And then we start a life review. So basically what happens is you're standing there and you're still trying to figure out what's going on. And you realize that you're helpless to do anything about it. And you got to go through the process. So they start my life review. And this this being that stood before me, the, the two that were in front of they they went off to my peripheral or off to the side. And this other one, it just stood there before me. And it began to speak to me about everything I was seeing in my life review. You know, if I did well, it would it would tell me great job. It would say, you know, you did a great job. This is this is how you do it right here. This is what you do. You know, if I help somebody, if I if I gave to the homeless, you know, you, you not only did you feel what you gave, you know, you felt the great feeling of giving to them. You also felt what they felt. And that was an interesting thing for me. You know, it, I felt the gratitude that the person felt that I helped. Now, on the contrary, um, what I did wrong, you know, the, the being, it did not uh, scold me or point a finger. It just, it was a light chastisement. I would like, you know, next time you can do it this way. And, and it spoke as if there was going to be a next time. But basically they put it in my mind that this next time wouldn't be that life that I just left. There would be another life that I could use these lessons to work with. So it's like, next time do this. And you felt all the pain you did there. Now, I had done a few bad things to people that I hadn't apologized for before I died. You know, I'd done some things that um, that I, I, you know, to this day, um, you know, I don't condone, you know, but then it was the norm, you know, and this is a part of what these beings were showing me as well. I'll get to that in a second. So I had done some bad things. Now, it wasn't the fact that they were like that light chastisement. That's not what made me feel mad and angry about it. It was the fact that I did it, you know, and that I was convicted and felt so bad for doing it as I could feel it what I did, I could feel the pain that I inflicted on them, you know? So what happened was after, after my, I got angry and I got mad. And so after my life review, it was as if there was a time for me to speak for myself. There was a time for me to say, all right, here's, this is basically how it was. Here's your life review. And what do you got to say for yourself? So at that point, when they said, what do you got to say for yourself? I, I, um, that's when I began to speak. And this is what I said. I was angry. I was still had the thought of my son in my head. So I was feeling bad that I'm going to leave my four year old son left to this world without a father. You know, those were my, my, my goal. He was my goal to get back there. And so what I said to them was, look, you sent me down there. And you never showed me how to do it. You never showed me how to live life. Yet I stand before you and you tell me that I did it wrong. I said, if I stay with you, great, because this is the best feeling that I've ever felt in all my existence. And that meant if I stayed with them, that I was about to reincarnate, go back into the world as a child and do it all over again, learn these lessons that I didn't learn and, and repeat. And so I said, if I go with you, fine, because this is the best feeling that I ever felt. Yet, if you send me back and teach me how to do it, I'll do it right. I'll do it right this time. And with that, when I said that, it was like heaven opened up and there was a million voices in the background of that darkness that lit up heaven and they began to speak something impart something into my mind each one of those million voices as these three voices these three beings in front of me were talking to me at the same time so 
This is how it went. Yes, we're going to send you back. Yet you have to make us a promise that when you go back, this knowledge that we're imparting into you, that you get it out to the world. You tell people about this knowledge that we're about to give you because mankind is on a path of destruction and we are being led to believe that we are using our free will. These are the words they were speaking to me, the three beings. At the same time, I'm getting knowledge from these other beings. And as these beings are speaking to me, I convey, convey to the one that the, the one I call the main being, I convey, I'm about to say, or mentally, because this was all mentally uh, te telepathically uh, done. There was no words. There was no physical anything. I was not even physical. As a matter of fact, I, I deliberately checked my, my peripheral vision to see if I could see my arms, legs, hands. There was nothing. But anyway, so these beings, they began to impart to me, oh, as these these this many the uncountable beings are putting this knowledge into me, I'm about to uh, mentally project that I can't handle all of that million voices over there. And it said to me, don't try to comprehend it. You'll remember when you return. Um, so I didn't try to, I stopped trying to comprehend it because it was as loud as thunder. It was louder than thunder. And the most, I, I just stopped. I started to focus on them and it's still being put into my head. And as it, that is being put into my head, these three beings are also speaking to me that mankind is on a path of destruction and that we um, are being led down. I call it corralled into a way of thinking. Because we are we we're supposed to we think we're getting hold on how does it how did it go? We think we are making the right decisions on many things that are presented to us, yet we are not given all of the options to make those decisions. Now this was in 2013, and since 2013, I've watched the world make decisions that they weren't given all of the options. You know, um, I've watched a lot of things happen in this world that they warned me of. And so, you know, they, they were telling me these things. They told me that mostly about um, us human mankind waking up, you know, we have to wake up to our power. We're stronger than that was one of the other things. We are stronger than we think we are. We are made to believe that we are these weak creatures that can't do anything, you know, that, that all, we're only destructive and this and that, but we are, we were made to, uh, we we were we're made to believe that we are these weak creatures. We're made to believe that we are these weak creatures and that mankind should wake up to its its true potential. And once we wake up to our true potential, the world will be a better place. But we it all starts from within each one of us. And so they started to impart this knowledge on me. Also, um, the deal was that I come back and I do this. So, you know, so that was that. And then I remember the last three things, three more things they said to me before they sent me back. And that was, we're going to give this knowledge to you that this will make your walk in life easier. And I've lived by these words ever since. And that is love everything because I am everything. Fear nothing because fear and doubt are the destroyer of mankind and know that I am God. These were the words that they spoke to me on right there. And then with that, they told me, now concentrate on the one thing that you love in this world and in that world and on the earth plane, concentrate on the one thing that you love on the earth plane. And that's what I began to do. I began to concentrate on my son because that's the only thing left. That was the only thing left. By this time, after the near-death review and all of that, the only thing that I had held on to was my four-year-old son. And I began to remember, you know, think of him and all of the love. And all of a sudden, wham, I'm back in my body. And I'm on this cold bathroom floor and my the pain's back, the pain in my stomach's back, you know, the nausea, the everything. But it's it's a little bit milder than it was before I left. And so 
when I wake up, it's like, what just happened? You know, I real I I felt like I know exactly what happened, but I needed answers. And the biggest thing about that was, I mean, I woke up crying. I woke up like I was touched by God. It was a most it was the most miraculous thing that I've ever seen in all of my life. Um, it was the most wonderful feeling that I've ever had in all of my life being over there. I, I often say I, I, I danced with death and it was wonderful. It was beautiful. And um, so when I came back, I, I gathered myself and that's when it all began for me. Like that's when one, I, I noticed heightened awareness, intuitiveness. I could see auras. Um, I could see uh, people's uh, intentions, their souls. I could look in their eyes and see their intentions. Um, the healings, things just, I just started helping people and healing people. Uh, my my affinity with nature i had this affinity with nature that i've never had before and um so things started to happen as i started to remember basically but remembering meant that i had to dive deep to find out what this power was and what this stuff was in my head that they put in there when i was up there this knowledge so i began to earnestly try to get back to that state where all of that love and joy and peace was. So I tried many things, you know, I tried DMT, I tried uh, mushrooms, um, yet I found that, I found that transcendental meditation over time was what, was what put me back to that state where I opened my Kundalini and I had my my uh meeting i had my encounter with this being that was with me when i came back i just didn't know its name it would speak to me when i first got back i would hear this this soft voice telling me everything i started to lean on that voice for months and whatever it would tell me to do now remember i was still my back was still messed up i had no job i, I only thing i had was my home which i owned at the time so that was my saving grace at that time and so everything i got was from divine providence you know everything i got was i listened to that word as i meditated listened to that voice in my head that would tell me what to do there's many things many many things that happened to me you know when i needed something like uh, i needed some money once and i had an appointment and I was meditating and I was told to go to the casino, you know, and I, I told the voice, you know what, if I didn't even have a car, I was going to borrow my car, my dad's car that day to go to an appointment. I didn't even own a car and um, I had lost my car. So um, I'm on the floor meditating and it says, go to the casino and get the money. And I'm like, is this you really this voice? Because. You're telling me, all right, if you if you want me to go to the casino today, make it happen because I don't have a car. And while I'm meditating, my dad knocks on the door. It's eight o'clock in the morning. He knocks on the door and says, Jeff, I just wanted to give you the car early today because, um, you know, I just don't feel like bringing it around later on so you can go to your appointment. So right there was my conf confirmation. I jump in. The, it's early. It's eight o'clock. I jump in the car. I drive to the casino. I make the $200 I need for my electric bill and then I go to my appointment. But little things like that began to happen to me. And, and then as time went on, about six months into my, because, oh, when I came back, I changed everything. I stopped, I, I stopped eating everything. I stopped, only, only thing I ate was fruits and vegetables. Um, I changed my whole diet. Um, I changed the way I talked because I understood that the, we have this power that in our in our in our speech, you know, I started to understand that that we have power in our speech. So I have to speak these words correctly. I changed the way that um, my entire life, the way that I think, the way that I act. Um, I even the way I named my new my my child that came after my NDE. You know, I understand that these names that we give our children are, are uh, they're actually 
prophecies they they, cre they create the future so whatever you, you call your child that's what it's going to be so i had to know that the meaning of my child um all of these things so i began to uh i changed my whole body and once i changed my body and my thinking and i got deeper into the meditations that voice revealed itself to me about six months afterward and that voice revealed itself to me to be the archangel metatron which many don't know of the archangel metatron i never knew of the archangel metatron because he's not in the christian bible i was raised in a christian nation he's not there but when it's this being revealed its name to me i began to study it and you know um it, it attached itself to me i was hearing its voice from the time i got back just didn't know its name didn't know how to interact with it just listened I, I would ask for things and it would tell me, yeah, that's going to happen like that. Like since that incident, you know, I began to do things like just man. I learned how to manifest, but without knowing what manifesting was, you know, um, things that I wanted, I would just go into meditation, ask this being, can I have it? It would say, yeah. And then next thing you know, it would show up like once. I learned about DMT because I wanted to get back to that state. This is how I tried DMT. Now, DMT in the United States is uh, DMT is illegal. It's more illegal than cocaine, you know. So I'm in this little town called Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, you know, and I look up. I asked that being I said, I will. I want to try DMT because I want to see if this will get me to that state. And so. Next thing you know, I swear it happened just like that. It the, the being said yes. And two weeks later, I get new neighbors and they come over with housewarming gifts. And we sit and we talk. And I tell them about my experience, my near-death experience, and how I changed over the past few months, you know, a couple months. And they tell me they they out of the blue, they say, You ever tried DMT? <laughs> and I was like, Wow, I just asked the universe for DMT. And here, and they said, well, we got some and we're going to let you try it. <laughs> so that, that was how I tried DMT, just things like that. But I'll tell you the biggest thing that happened was, um, and these are things that came on like this power that um, everyone has. I had to experience it myself before I could tell everybody that they have this power, you know, and this was, it was uh, December of uh, 2016. And it was a Friday and my brother calls me and he's like, because by this time I'm three years into meditating, helping people. There are many people I help, you know, that that uh, I just started to help and heal and, and do things for. And, and this this little reputation around here grew and my brothers knew about it. So my brother calls me one day and he's down in he's 300 miles away in the state of Virginia in the United States. And um, he's he calls me and he says, my son, he overdosed and he's in a coma. And they told me that they're going to pull the plug on Sunday. He said, they're going to pull the plug on Sunday and, and uh, they're going to take him off of life support. And I, he said, is there anything you can do? And and I just, I said, I'll, I'll do what I can. And, and it was a Friday. And here's the thing that Friday, I don't know what it was but I was so busy, I forgot about it. Honestly, I'm just being honest. And then the next day, Saturday night, I said, why didn't, oh, I forgot to meditate about my nephew. So I go into this meditation. And by this time, I'm three years into it. Metatron, the being Metatron that speaks to me, we have a great relationship at this time at three years in. And so I go up to what I call the second heaven. Now, the second heaven is that spiritual realm that this is where everything that we want manifests first before it comes into this realm here. And so I go up there and, and I tell him, you know, we talk about my nephew and he takes me. He takes me. He says, come on, let's go. And we go to this place where. And as a metaphor, I can call it was like a playground because it was a bunch of children there and they were all being um, they were all being tended to by what I would call the spirit of Jesus Christ. And um, my nephew was there and, I, and I, he, I'm right with him. And so what happens in this conversation is, is what 
what showed me the edification of it, it edified my my strength in this the walking in this power that we all have. And so my nephew's there and I began to talk to him and I said, um, it's time for you to come back. You should come back. You, you're allowed to come back. And he said, I'm afraid they're mad at me. My father, my sister, my stepmother, they're mad at me. I don't want to come back. And besides, this is this the feeling here is wonderful. This is the best feeling I ever felt. I said, I know this is a beautiful place. I said, yet yeah, you, you got things to do. You have things to do on the back there on the earth plane. You're going to help many people because as I'm talking to him, I'm being shown that he's supposed to help many people. You know, and you're going to help many people. And he's he's like, OK, I'm coming back. But in 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 this realm, you really can't lie or fake the truth. So I felt that he wasn't telling me the truth. So I began to talk to him some more. Look, your your mother, I mean, your stepmother, your father and your sister, they're going to have smiles on their face when they wake up. When you wake up, they're not going to be mad at you. They're going to be happy. And um, like I said, you got things to do on the other side where you need to help. There's people that's going to need your help. And so we sat and we talked for a little while longer and he said, OK, I'm coming back. And he said, but I just want to stay here a little bit longer because this is the most wonderful place I've ever been. And so with that, we departed. Now, I, I did. Like I said, there was the spirit of Jesus Christ there, but I didn't interact with it because he was busy with giving comfort to these other children who were in what I call limbo, because this coma state is like limbo. You, you could either go go back home to the earth plane or you can move on to the the uh reincarnation and come back or on to the third heaven whichever i'm not the judge of that so he says he is so i i come back into my body i've prepared for for things like uh uh blackouts and uh what do, what do they call them emps i've prepared by just storing food, um, purchasing uh, precious metals, things like that. This is the things that I've been shown to do in my meditations. Purchasing precious metals, not making any major purchases on credit or anything like that. Um, things things like that. Uh, just have food stored up for a few few months because when, when these things happen, um, that's all it's going to take is a few months. You know, it's not they're not going to be long, apocalyptic, uh, year long famines and droughts all over the world. But it, it would only take three months of no food for this country, the, this country that they call the most wealthiest or whatever to go under, you know, to 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 go into chaos. So. I believe that those are it'll be spurts like that. Make sure you got enough food for at least three months, you know, things like that. Fresh water. You know, I change a lot of things. I don't drink. I don't drink tap water. I don't. I only drink spring water. Things that I've changed. You know, I've been shown how we. It's dumbing down our our. Uh, you know, like the fluoride they put in the water. I don't drink that water. Um, fluoride and toothpaste. I don't use toothpaste. I use natural remedies. You know, these teeth aren't, they're not that bad, are they? <laughs> but things like that. But um, as far as preparing us, um, all I could say is the best preparation is to get in touch with that thing we call God and it will guide, it'll guide you through. That's what I know is going to guide me through. Thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate that. Um, I'd also like to speak about the book, uh, <laughs> I Walk Amongst Gods by Jeff Cleckley. Um, it's on Amazon. You can pick it up on Amazon. It goes into detail about, uh, you know, my, my encounter on the other side, my, my encounters with Metatron and the powers that, that we have. And it also has some teachings that I learned that I put in here for everybody to, uh, to use to use for their, for their higher, higher, uh, growth, whatever. Um, and you know, it teaches meditation. It teaches other things. Um, I walk amongst gods is, uh, 
the website is www.iwalkamongstgods.com. You can get the book there. Or you can go to Amazon. It's on Amazon right now. I just wish everybody the best. I don't. Thank you for having me. I should say thank you.